John Diebler. What's up, man? John Diebler. You got me? You can hear me? Uh, new daddy. Can you hear me? Yeah. How about you? Okay, good. Yeah, I can hear you. Good. I oh, closed the door. Now, yeah, because now I'm at my son's room and I work today. I search about your favorite superheroes on our wall is, as you see, Batman. Perfect. I, I work today. First time because of you. I study my job about the first like interview. I am not interviewer, but you pushed me about the search. Batman is your favorite you superhero. Huh? I'm actually a Batman fan. Well, Batman. what's going Batman on? My favorite. Not much, man. Just kids are getting ready for bed. Blind still, still they're up. Yeah, uh, they, they don't go. They, they are not it's still in bed, bed huh? It's, it's only seven thirty here. Seven thirty, huh? just one hour. You are here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's just about the Central European time. Same, I think. Huh? Yeah. We are Thanks one hour. So. We are one hour late. You are almost yeah. Turkish, man. Come on, five different teams. Huh? Maybe a Turk Turkish passport after Shane Larkin for you. My uh, my Turkish is really good. I speak really good Turkish. I know. I was Kathleen doing your wife. She's great, Please, man. She's I, great. I, I will I will give some introduce to our fans. Uh, let me first of all do, uh, tell them about uh, what what's going on uh, about our schedule. Şimdi. Um, biz burada e, John İngilizce konuşmaya devam edeceğiz. Siz bana sorularınızı istiyorsanız Türkçe de yazabilirsiniz ama soru cevap kısmına geçtikten sonra lütfen gönderirseniz daha iyi olur. Çünkü burada e, hali hazırda gönderdiğiniz DM'lerden bir sürü soru zaten ben gördüm. E, ama ondan önce John'la biz bir İngilizce konuşmaya devam edip e, akışın gidişatına göre beraber belirleriz. I just translate about that to please give us e, time. E, Uh, please give us time about that. Uh, we will first of all make a conversation, like a dialogue. And now, now I am okay. I think my wife warned me. Now, this now I am okay. Okay. And uh, we will keep going about the talking in a regular way. It's first time my experience because we worked you uh, two years. I know everything for about you, and you know everything for about me. Because Absolutely. two years, almost three games per week. It's hard schedule. And uh, it's between 2013 and 2015. And uh, after that, there is a big story. Keep going for your career. Uh, we will uh, listen from you about that, everything. But bef before that, I want to... Uh, listen up for you and all our kids uh, wonder about that you're growing up way so uh, you are coming from united states highest university i know everything uh, but i want to uh, show you that's why i started this type of dialogues with you because you are a good role model for us for our kids let me give you some intro introduction about our club this is a assist sport club in izmir it is a good organization at, and uh, just six years old club and uh, before this pandemic situation uh, at february uh, we have almost 450 players starting from six years till 70 70 years and after this pandemic situation uh, this is first uh, surprise the period for everybody all over the world you know yes. and yes. after that yes. and after that um it stopped unfortunately and we keep just staying on the this type of dialogues with our president of the club uh, with psychologists with different type of these guys and uh, online practices until june uh, we come like this but after that it stopped almost two months and then uh, 10th of august again government uh, gives us permission uh, about to we can continue to doing so step by step We started, everybody got hesitation and scare some about to send their kids 
They are right, of course, because um, uh, of course. unknown uh, time for for all of us. It's virus affected time to whom? For, it's a crazy time for yeah. everybody. I don't think anyone's ever experienced something like this. Yeah, we started to coming back, but again, uh, they stopped it because affected people's number is too high, as you know. And now again, yeah. we are at home mostly, and all weekend in Turkey. Is close. I think something in Israel right now. By the way, you are playing in Israel, Hapoel Tel Aviv. Uh, maybe some of them knows, doesn't knows. So um, now we have just time starting from Monday to Friday between one o'clock and four o'clock. But in reality, we don't have because at the same time, most of the uh, our students uh, has uh, online educations at the same time. <laughs> so in reality. We don't have enough time to making practices, so we have to stay online practices. So we we are trying to make the all we have almost twelve uh, coaches in different groups, and they are pushing their uh, schedules, uh, uh, contents, uh, yeah, pilates, uh, body body work, working, uh, also different type of basketball ball handling. So, yeah. and uh, I think about to making this type of organizations uh, to dialogue because they need to understand what they should do after, of course, this period stopped. If, in, when the life is coming normal, they need to understand about that, what they should do if they want to be a basketball player one day. I wanted to start it uh, between, uh, uh, starting with you, John, because you are really, I think, correct. Uh, role model for them why because you have average size almost six six and uh, one meter and 98 centimeters right your size is yes. your height and yes. uh, you have not unbelievable athletic talents so you are a regular guy and uh, i wanted to but you are a top level player and i know that uh, you are you have still the record at euroleague about to uh, high percentage over 50 what 50 so uh, you are a great story i think for our kids because they can be like you but what they need please i wanted to tell your story i wanted to listen to your story uh, what should they do yeah i mean um first coach thanks for having me um like you said we were able to work together um, in Karshek and in Besiktas. Um, so I've gotten to know you very well and uh, always kept in contact with you. But um, honestly, for me, um, I was really lucky because my father was a basketball coach. Um, and he taught me, he taught and me. I had two older brothers who played basketball. So I was very lucky from the standpoint of um, I was, I had people who were making sure I was doing the right thing. Even when I was shooting, when I was younger, I wasn't just three point line shooting threes and shoot them. Um, my father told me that when I was going to shoot, he said, you have to start close and get your form correct. So one of the things that I did and, and coaches, you know, even to this day, when I go into the gym, first thing, first thing I do is form shooting right close under the basket. That's something that I've done at a, since a young age um, because as I got older and as I got stronger, your form doesn't change. So I developed these good habits from a shooting standpoint. As a, and most athletic guy. Um, but, you know, when I was in high school, I was up at 5.30 every morning working out before school. Um, 5.30? Playing basketball, 5.30 every morning. Wow. How many hours, every honestly? Morning. We don't get it? We go 5.30 five, we go five to 6.30, and that gives you about a half hour to shower, get ready for school, then I go to school. Will you please uh, tell some uh, what what you have in detail? For example, what what what drills mostly you have at the mornings? Yeah, uh, I mean it varies different days, but we would do. We'd always start off with ball handling. Um, we would do ball handling as kind of a warm up, um, just to you know that's something that you know you always have to always have to get your ball handling correct, and that's something that I still do to this day. You know, I'm not the best ball handler in the world. 
not the best shooter in the world, but it's always there's always things that I'm trying to refine in my game. But uh, we start with ball handling, and, and some days are different. Some days we'd work on off-screen shooting. Some days we'd work on pick-and-roll shooting. So we would change every day. But like I said, we'd go for an hour before school, and I, like I said, I have my brother who's with me, and he would push me every day, and my dad was a coach. So, uh, you know, those are – there's just different drills that we do every single day. I mean, it was uh, – yeah, I even do these drills now in the summertime in the off-season. Um, you know, one day we'll focus on off screen, shooting off screens. One day we'll focus on, you know, finishes in the paint, whether it's a floater with your left or right, right or right. mid range shots off a pick and roll. You know, there's there's always different things that you can work on on your game to try and perfect that craft. It's not really just about, you know, okay, I'm I'm good at shooting, I'm only gonna work on shooting. No, you have to continue to work on the other areas of your game, even if you know, like, like, coach, I wasn't a guy. That I, I didn't play a lot of pick and rolls. I didn't post up. But those are all things that you still continue to work on. By the way, I, for example, I, I really wonder about your father's um, method, you know. Uh, when he decided uh, to basically to send you or push you to making this type of shooting forward position, for example, why? When he decided to, you, you cannot be a point guard, for example, or a really, really shooting guard position, not like a number three in Europe. I mean, um, you know what's what's funny is my my father never he never pushed never me pushed to me. play basketball. He always he never forced me to come in in the morning, and you know, he would always say like, "Hey, if you want to come, in, come in and work out," but he never forced basketball upon me. But I will say, I will say because I was taller, because I was a little taller, taller for my age in junior high, you know, most coaches, they'd say, okay, you're tall, you're going to go play in the post. My dad said, no, you're tall, okay, I'm going to teach you how to handle the ball. You're going to be able to shoot. So that was an advantage that I had. Just a second, I'm sorry. And my wife again warned me because you're something, uh, some really small problems about your voice. So you are sure about your internet connection? Or maybe you yeah. can upload up your voice. Is everything all right for you? Hold on. Can you hear me now? Just, just, be sure, just be sure about. You got me. Yeah, I know. I, I got. I got you. But um, somebody is writing um, about some something uh, s s little problem about your coming voice. Is if you are, if you are right? yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, like this. It might. It might be my kids. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> not, not about that. Oh, if you if you are sure about that, keep content, please. If everything is already about connection. Yeah, everything's good on my end, I okay. think. Um, go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Uh, okay, yeah, somebody um, write it down. Right, right now. Okay, Güneş Karan, teşekkür. All right. Keep, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, it might be better if I use my earphones. Whoever suggested that. Um, oh, maybe. Let me just try to put my earphones in here. Earphone is yeah, yeah, yeah, maybe it's better, maybe. Uh, give me one it's second. Better, me one second, I'll be right back. Benim sesimde problem var mı? Takip edenlere sorayım. Ben de kulaklık kullanayım mı yoksa böyle iyi mi? Bir kişinin böyle yapması yeterli benim için. All right, let me connect. Let me connect. Uh, there we go. Can you hear me? Hear me? Yes, I'm okay. Is that better? Uh -huh. Is that better, everyone? Yes, somebody starts show up. Set offense up, you know. C coming from down screen. Play pick and roll to right. I forget all those plays. All that I remember this is better. Do. This is better. This is better, okay. I would say. Go ahead, please. Uh, please tell this. We look at repeat the same thing. Just I wonder about that, because it's uh, not easy for our coaches. For example, when some, some talent player is at 14, prospect player, I mean, uh, what what we should continue to manage this uh, guy about the point guard or off guard or number four position or whatever. How he decided that you are this position correct? I mean, he just. <clears throat> He, he didn't my father didn't just do that with me he did that with all his players i think it's easy as a coach to uh especially at a young age because everyone wants to win so if you have a guy who's taller and he 
you know, can shoot over people in the post, you say, hey, go play in the post. But for my father, he was always like, listen, not just for me. We had other guys who were my height. He said, you guys are going to learn how to play guard um, because you might not grow anymore when you get to high school and people might catch up to you. And if you only know how to play post and you're, you know, 190, it's kind of difficult. <laughs> so everyone grows, everyone, you know, some people grow when they're in college, you know, it just, so at a young age, no matter how, no matter big you were, how my big father you always said father like, Hey, you're going to learn how to handle the ball. You're going to learn how to shoot like a guard. So I was lucky. I kept growing to be, you know, 198 and I was able to play the guard position. How about your big brother? I think he was coach, I think, at the yeah, same time. But uh, when, he when he gave up playing, or uh, how, how many ages between you and him? He's older than you, but... Yeah, he's a year and a half older than me, and he is uh, he's an assistant coach right now at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. So he never played professionally, um, but he just started coaching right away in college. But he played four years in Division One in college, and he's uh, coaching now at Ohio State. We can't he say about that you are lucky. He wasn't blessed with the height like I am. He's he's a little smaller than I am. And a little smaller, about six two something. Yeah, yeah. Ya ben daha şanslıyım diyor he burasında a, işte a onun a şeyi. Let me translate some because uh, it's in different Turkey about six to six six maybe our kids doesn't know. Bunların şeyinde uh, Amerika'da uh, boy anlatımları bizim gibi 1.98 1.92 diye ben daha şanslıydım. Benim abim biraz daha kısaydı benden 1.90 civarıydı. Ben daha uzundum ondan. İlk görünüşte tabii ki benim işte pivot oynayabileceğimi filan söyleyenler oluyordu ama babam hayır yeteri kadar uzayamayabilirsin. E, dolayısıyla e, seni guard oynatmamız lazım dedi ve hikaye böyle başladı dedi. Well, uh, you are from Ohio or you just joined for about to playing basketball over there? Because uh, no, I watched your no. interview with Murat, Murat Muratanoğlu and Bucky He told about that as a Bucky because your uh, school's nickname Bucky. I think a type of tree, right? The Buckeyes, yeah. He uh, he's an Illini fan. Buckeyes, yes. and Ohio State and Illinois are in the same conference, so I always uh, give yeah. him a rough time when when Ohio State wins. <laughs> uh, he told about that Illinois has uh, all over the world fans, but you rejected, I think it's uh... Ohio State <laughs> has more fans. It's like a, a Fenerbahce Galatasaray or Galatasaray Beşiktaş, this type of rival, I think. It's... Yeah, it kind of is. Uh, it's uh, our, our biggest rival is Michigan, but uh, by no, the way, you I... see Sona Şentürk in the house. Soner, you see, my guy. I love playing with Sona, man. Great guy. I loved playing with him and Karşıyaka. Love. And it. now he's he's playing at a second division team. Is the most favorite team. Uh, coming for the oh, first really? division and is the yes, is most experienced player over there. We are st still staying in touch. That was good. This uh, we, we will talk about that these days, but before that, individually, I want to our uh, kids or our sports players knows about some details about you. For example, nicknames are important. What was your nickname about your Ohio? Uh, you, you can, what was my nickname? You see, white Ohio? cheese at the same time, <laughs> Sonar made a comment, white cheese. In in in, Tur in Turkey nickname, huh? Apparently, apparently, Coach Ufuk Sarica thinks I need to get more sun. Uh, White cheese. When I was in when I was in Izmir, I didn't get enough sun, so that was his nickname for me. <laughs> yeah, but before that, I know that Threebler, Threebler. Yeah. Huh? That's what they called me in college. Yeah, they called me Threebler. <laughs> yeah. And uh, why your number is thirty-three? Every team. Uh. Honestly, Jersey my number. older brother was 33. My older brother was 33, and he's someone that I've always admired as a player and someone I look up to. So I just thought it was kind of cool to uh, to wear his number when I got to college. So in high school, I was in high school, I was 23. And because I was a freshman playing varsity in high school, I had last pick of the numbers since I was the youngest. And it was between like 43 and 23. And there was no way I was going to pick a uh, 43 so I picked 23 but then when I got to college I wanted to wear the same number as my brother so that's why I landed on 33 at the same time by the way here's a good question uh, now I prepared to ask this question and what do you think uh, about your NBA potential because when you were at Ohio State at the same time I followed your team you have great player like your David Lighty still playing in EuroLeague and Deshaun Thompson again he played in FS in Turkey 
And uh, you, these guys, I think three guys, and uh, one more big guy, I remember. Str stretch, I think. Yeah. But uh, Sandra, you yeah. had, yeah, yeah. And you had uh, NBA potential. Uh, didn't you think about uh, go there or just direct your agent or your father sent you to Europe? Um, no, when I, I actually, you know, I got drafted in the second round. And then, but the year I got drafted was the year of the lockout. So there was no summer league, no training camp. So I went overseas. Why? Because the lockout. They had the the NBA lockout where they, the collective bargaining agreement with the players and the teams, they couldn't agree, so they delayed the season. So, the year I got drafted, um, they didn't have like your normal summer league and your normal training camp. So, went overseas, and then honestly, I just as far as the timing and and where I was at in in my career, just. I felt being overseas was the best for me at the time. And I just, you know, I was fortunate enough to have, as you know, coach, we had, we had great success. Um, yeah. Car Sheket and I spent three amazing years there and, yeah. you know, I was able to play, I was able to go and play EuroLeague and, and as a player, you know, EuroLeague is the second the same best time, league outside of the NBA. Here, here at the same time, good question. One of our player, Efe Guntach asked at the same time. Uh, when we got the trophy and champions at Panaka Sheka, uh, we joined the EuroLeague. And uh, is it, that was an opportunity about that to keep continue, go ahead with Panaka Sheka to play in EuroLeague. But you didn't uh, prefer this. And you went first Olympiakos, I think, in short time. But then you joined FS, I think. Before that, you got no, offered, DJ, I think. DJ, DJ went Olympiakos. I know, but before that, I think you got offered yeah. Olympiakos. Yeah, uh, but you you joined the uh, FS because just because of the uh, more money or uh, fans uh, wonder about that why uh, that will be your uh, fourth year in Kasheka, it could be, but with you and DJ Bobby, okay, these are different for them. But just for you, why you didn't stay in Kasheka and you joined the FS? Uh, yeah, I mean, being honest, it was definitely uh, money had a, a lot to do with it. Um, you know. I obviously I I love Karsheka. Um coach you know that those are three years that um were amazing years for me I think um from from my first year to see how much just how much I grew as a player um you know with coach Ufuk um and to see how how the club grew to be honest with you I think was uh was was pretty special and also for me to You know, obviously, to, for Karshaka to play in EuroLeague was uh, was a great a great accomplishment for the club. And I even remember, you know, Coach Ufu, uh, my first year there with him, he said one of the goals was to get the club to EuroLeague. And, you know, we were able to ac accomplish that. And I think, um, you know, as a player, I felt at the time that, you know, I did all that all that I could give, you know, to to the club, to the city. And it was I was excited for something new. You know, and, and like I said, you know, money obviously had played a factor in it, but I was definitely excited for a new, a new challenge, I think, and a new, a new team, you know, just something new for me, you know, three straight years was great. And I wouldn't change anything about those three years, but I was looking forward to that next step in, in a new challenge in my career. Now you look back, uh, that was a correct decision for you, honestly. You happy about this uh, changing road after Kasheka to FS? No, I think for so. sure. I've, I've uh, yeah, I think it was, I think it was a, a natural uh, progression in my career. And, um, you know, obviously I've, I'm not one of those people who looks back and says, you know, what if, but I, I got to play with some amazing players. Um, you know, I got to, again, grow as a, as a player. And I think, uh, you know, for my first, First year in EuroLeague, I thought individually I did okay, and and as a team, I don't think we lived up to our expectations because we had a very very talented team. Um, but it was, you know, at that time, I think it was the best thing for my career, and and you know, I think it was. I'm happy with the decision that I made. I am um, got to play for for an amazing amazing coach who's you know one of the more accomplished Jukovic. coaches in in you know European basketball history. So. 
and it was uh, yeah. again different style from from what I was used to playing with Ufuk, and uh, so it was it was great for me. You know, I really I really do, and you know, I met some amazing people in my time there, guys that on my team that I still talk to this day. Then next Euroleague experience, different club again, like a big fans like Kashyyyk, a Galatasaray team, and different story. And I think there uh, you got this record at Euroleague career, 51% mm -hmm. at Galatasaray with Coach Ataman, I think. Yes. Yeah. What what, yes, what uh, can you say about the Galatasaray years? Ah, uh, you know it was it was a really up and down year. Um, again, we had a team with with a lot of talent, amazing players. Um, but I think uh, you know the second this was the first year that Euroleague decided to do the regular season in in the Euroleague and not do uh, the group stages like they had done in the past. So you were going to play every team twice. And I was really excited about that because when I was in Ephesus, you know, I never got to play at Barcelona. I never got to play at Madrid because they yes, weren't in our group. Yes, di different, so. different top 16 organization was. Then it changed then uh, regular league organization, yeah. right? With the yeah. same time at Galatasaray and the harder schedule. And yeah. uh, this time I want to ask uh, this question because our uh, young guys is wondering about this part is very important. And in, in this EuroLeague uh, hard, hard schedule, in almost two days, three days, you have a game and it's not easy to make uh, extra practices. But in regular, maybe off season, maybe break times, what are you doing about the extra practices, honestly, to improve your, for example, your strong side is shoot, shooting part. Okay. Uh, you keep going, working about shooting part or plus, uh, what are you doing extra to uh, put put next to your shooting. For example, our last season, uh, I know that you improved your playing pick and roll some. Before mm -hmm. that, you you just coming from off the screens or you are waiting for the spot up shots. And honestly, your 90%, 95% role was this, except defensive part. Yeah. But day by day, day by day, you started to use to play with the ball more and you improved your pick and roll playing. So I, I am asking about that. Uh, you are working for example, taking off the screens or spot up shots, how many, what you can say about for our kids? Yeah, during, uh, during the season, you know, like you had mentioned during, especially when you're, you know, playing. You see the question, you see the be... question, what is the What's... first three features to be a good shooter like you? <laughs> our player, this I'll... is our, one of our good players asking I'll... to you. I'll He's, answer, that. Good shooter I'll answer also. that one. I'll answer that one first so before not? I get to your, your question, coach. Um, mm -hmm. The first thing is, uh, I would say the first – you asked the first three features, if I remember correctly. Um, from a technical standpoint, having – making sure you have a good base, your feet. Your feet are the most important – in my personal opinion, yeah. your, from your waist down is the most important thing about shooting. If you look at all the shooters, great shooters in, in the history of the NBA, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Larry Bird, Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, they all shoot different. Everyone shoots different. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this this very good point, John. Because you are jumping at the same time, same time, and we coaches are teaching different different stops, right, left, left, right, uh, same time jump. But you, you you mostly prefer the jumping at the same time. What you prefer or what should what it should be? Honestly, I don't I don't think there's right or wrong i think the main thing is making sure you have a good solid base and you're consistent no matter what you do so mm -hmm. for me as a shooter like you said yeah i do prefer sometimes to do jump at the same time but there mm -hmm. are also times where i do if i'm coming off the screen and if a defender's guarding me a certain way i like to go left right or right left to create more space like you, but i know no matter it can which be changed eh? do, no matter which one it depends I do, on the defense the end, uh -huh. Yes, depends on the defense. But at the end, I know that my footwork, like my base is always going to be the same. My feet are never too close together. They're never too wide apart. Whether I go left, right, right, left, or jump on the same one, my feet are always going to be the same as far as when I elevate to shoot. So Let I me translate this part because this is important detail. Let me translate just this part. Ee, sağ sol stop mu, sol sağ stop mu yoksa aynı anda tek zamanlı stopu mu tercih ediyorsun ve hangisi olmalı, e, bunu neye göre e, çalışmalısın ve yapıyorsun diye sorduğumda e, yani takip ediyorsunuzdur ama bu detay önemli çünkü e, şunu e, söylüyor, hangisini yaparsan yap, 
Onu en iyi yapmaya çalışıyorum ama bu değişiyor. Savunmanın beni savunduğu şekle göre de ben sağ sol sol sağ da yapıyorum ama evet dediğin gibi çoğunlukla tek zamanlı stopu çalışıp yapıyorum. How you can improve this? How you can do that? Let me explain. I, yeah, I think like as far as as like you had mentioned coach during um during the season um just coming in whether it's 30 minutes before practice and just getting some shots if you want to work on your foot just get shots up you don't have to go you know 100 so you're tired for practice but like you said coach when i was with you the last time we worked together i worked i really improved my ball handling and and doing better on pick and rolls and and you know me coach i'll come in you know whether it's a half hour 45 minutes before practice and and get 20 minutes of work in not to exhaust myself before practice but just to get that little repetition in your mind and to always continue to work on those things how about end of the practices for example i remember the one important example let me translate and tell the kids biz karşıdayken daha doğrusu kendileri biz koçla karışmıyorduk bu böyle bir otomatiğe dönmüştü ee, bayağı da sert ve yorucu antrenmanlar yapardık ve antrenmanların sonunda kendi içlerinde 2 2 2 on 2 i think uh, should shooting game end of the practices no paint ha huh? So on two practices yeah. with Soner, you, Cap. Yeah. And uh, orada bunlar uh, şeye basmadan, paint'e basmadan 2-2 şut maçı yaparlardı ve bayağı kora kora olurdu ve bu 2 saatlik antrenmanın sonunda olurdu. So uh, usually I see our youngs, uh, end of the practices, coach, we are tired. Uh, it, it was really hard practices, whatever, this type of uh, excuses they have. But you were one of the uh, most hard working player as I ever honestly worked and that was really glad for me to see you because you are professional very well and honestly again I can say that uh, when I compare with our Turkish guys and you guys coming from college culture culture, and you are more lucky because you have a coach big brother and daddy uh, you can separate to be uh, work time and enjoying time and you are doing your job you are doing the practices every day in the same consistency this is best uh, respect for us for example when i watched the last dance my mg mj uh, michael yeah. jordan's story that was really the best thing is as i ever seen every game he has in the same concentration so i can say that you have similar character every practices every game you have in the same concentration and same discipline how you can supply this when, when you can What you can tell about this for the kids as a discipline? You know, you know what's funny is I think it's just, again, how I was raised. And and I'll be honest with you, Coach. I've never understood people who say, like, you know, I love I love playing basketball. I love playing basketball. But those same people say, I don't want to practice. We're playing basketball. So how do you not enjoy coming to practice every day? Like, we're still playing yeah. basketball. So – I've never it it blows my mind for people who are like, oh, I don't want to practice today. I don't want to play like don't you like to play basketball? We're playing basketball. It's not like we're, you know, doing something. We're still playing the same game that we play on game days. So, I definitely I had a, and you mentioned him before. I had a teammate David Lighty. Um, you know, your teammate from Ohio State. Very, my teammate from Ohio State very similar like we just we always had energy. And proud. you know me, coach, I, I have energy and I can talk for days. Like, I just, I don't know. It's, I always have energy at practice. I enjoy practice. I love How? practice every day. Is it, is it depends on is it good sleeping, eating well, or concentration? Oh, or because... No, ab- absolutely. I mean, you definitely have to take care of your body and eat, eat well and get good rest, you know. But for me, it's more of a mentality. Um, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm feel so lucky and blessed to be able to play basketball because there's a lot of people who would love to be in my shoes and um you know maybe now because i'm i'm a little older now uh i definitely feel like i want i want please i appreciate it more now give yeah, some secrets or give some uh something of advice or recommends or whatever what you can say about to our place what is the way of the uh, supplying this concentration every day this consistency i mean For example, I never remember you look tired or you look unhappy face or whatever. You are human also. You are not machine. You are not robotic. <laughs> But uh, of course, you cannot smile every day. Of course, you cannot uh, show the same effort. But you can be at the court every day in the same series, same concentration. And you were doing this. I think the 
different part of you from the others is this. So how you can supply this? You can uh, give some advices to our youngs. Again, I think it, it all comes to your, comes down to your mental approach. Um, you know, I came to the gym. I, like you said, coach, yeah, I wasn't, there might've been days where I was like, you know, like I might've complained to you about a foul a couple times, you know, in practice. And you're like, well, what's wrong with John? But I think for the most part, just, I love to play basketball. Like I genuinely love coming to practice and playing basketball and being around my teammates. Like to me, that's, that's fun. And I never came to practice because this is what two hours out of my, this is my job. You know, this is my job and it's, two, three hours out of my day and I get to play a game. I'm playing a game for a living. And that's, that's my mindset. And I just come in and, you know, I, I enjoy, like, I love practice. I love practice. I enjoy it. I love, uh, I love competing with my teammates and you know, me coach, I would, you know, talk crap to my teammates and you know, we have fun in practice. You know, we have fun, we compete against each other. So, for me, it's just a mentality, I think. But but also, you need to eat right. You need to take care of your body. You can't stay up till 3, 4 in the morning and then expect to have practice at 11 in the morning and be good. You have to take care of yourself. Can you say that I am doing the uh, same routine every time uh, in my in my uh, career? For example, you lived, you achieved unbelievable stories, success together or FS or Galatasaray, whatever. But at the same time, you live some bad games, of course. What are you doing differently uh, when you lost or when you have bad performance? And if, can you compare about these days? For example, great game, the day after what you are doing, and the bad performance practice or game, what you are doing the day after or that night or whatever. You, you watch yourself, for example. You, uh, you recommend this to get the uh, film of the game from the assistant coaches. You watch usually or you don't? No, I, I definitely I'm I'm big on, on watching film. Um I I like to watch um definitely things that I can improve on, not just you know, okay, I had a good game, I want to watch my highlights. No, I like to watch from a actual basketball standpoint, like or even a bad game, like okay, where areas could I have maybe gotten another shot off or areas where, hey, I shot this, maybe I should have penetrated and got my teammate an extra shot but it all comes down to you know like watching film of what defense is going to do like for me I like to know how defenses are probably going to guard me so I try to find you know different advantages if I know like hey this team they trail every time on screens they're going to trail you so okay I like to know that or if if I'm coming off a screen as you know coach if the point guard's going to jump to the ball when I come off the screen You know, how do I, how is that person going to defend? Because I know I'm going to pass to the point guard without even dribbling. So I definitely watch film. And, and you know, as far as like having a bad game personally, I'm, I'm, I don't really, I'm someone who doesn't really uh, overreact to if I have a bad game. Um, you know, if I make you seven don't? threes, I'm going to come in and do the same thing I did if I go over seven. I'm going to come in and I'm going to come in before practice, get my shots up or after practice, get my shots up just like I would any day. I don't, I don't overreact. I don't say like, okay, I went, I went seven of eight in this game. I don't need to shoot tomorrow because I'm okay. I went seven of eight. No, I'm going to continue to do my routine. I'm going to start in close under the basket, do my form shooting. I'm going to get my spot shooting in that I would like to do. And it's the same. Can you say that um, you are a scorer player, you are a sh shooter player. Can you say that? Uh, you, you cannot make in the same percent every day, but you can play the defense every time. But it's like, a, I think, pol politic sentence. Er, er, everybody say that. But I think it depends on some your offensive performance. What can you say about that? And let me translate. Yeah, sen skorer bir oyuncusun, şütör bir oyuncusun ve uh, her zaman yaptığın, her zaman aynı şutu sokamazsın aynı yüzdeyle. Bu bir gerçek ama her zaman aynı defansı yapabilirsin. Bu bir politik cümle gibi gelir bana her zaman. Bu gerçekten böyle midir sence? Şut soktuğun gün mü daha iyi defans yapıyorsun? Yoksa e, bu, bu fark etmiyor mu, değişmiyor mu diye sordum. Please go ahead. Um, honestly, for for me, I, I get what you're saying as far as like, yeah, it's, you have to, you know, 
impact the game any way that you can. But coach, you, you know, for me, there's been a lot of games and even when, as, as we work together where I may only shoot two or three times, but that doesn't mean I just have to stand there. Like I like there's other ways you can impact the game. And, and for me as a shooter, like a lot of times people don't, and I don't, I don't have the ball. I'm not a point guard. So a lot of times I'm either coming off screens and, and if someone's guarding me, I'm not going to complain about not getting the ball. Like if I go stand in the corner and my guy's standing by me, we play four on four. I did my job. <laughs> like as a shooter, just being on the court, having that presence, um, you know, I feel like, I can always, yeah, if, if I'm not getting shots, and like I said, Coach, I'm, there's been many games where I probably didn't shoot. I maybe shot twice the whole game. But, you know, you can always rebound or, you know, you still have to find ways to impact the game. You can't just be out there just because you're not getting the ball. So can you say people... that it's the same for you about that? It's same playing defense, same energy, even you are making shots or missing shots or you yeah. use the shots. Or whatever. So you can you can do that, huh? You can Absolutely. say everybody misses shots. Yeah. Everybody misses shots. I don't know one single. Yeah, and player. you don't care, make or miss. Don't you don't care. care, and you just yeah. You you care, but you should continue the game uh, like you I don't, don't care. I don't worry about misses. Yeah. I don't worry about misses. Everyone misses shots. <laughs> you you've we've worked together for a long time, and you know I I never hesitate. I can I shoot if I go 0 for seven. I'm gonna shoot the eighth like I just went seven one. for seven. Like yes yes. Yes, I know because that. Because in everyone. So this is, fast. but this depends on confidence, and this depends on I think uh, making extra work workouts. That's why I'm asking but I, you. Yeah, I was I was gonna tell you. I I will say the reason that I have that mentality is I know how hard I've worked to be at the level that I'm at, and I know like there's gonna be games where yes, they're just not falling. Like there's the best shooter in the world ever of all time misses shots. Everyone misses shots. But I know that I've put in the work, you know, in the off season before practice that, you know, I'm, I'm still confident that even if I go 0 for 10, I feel like the 11th one's going in. And I'm confident in that because I know that I've put the work in. I haven't just been sitting on the couch until practice starts. I know like, hey, I've worked to get here. I've worked to be the shooter that I am. And I know that, you know what, even if I miss again, I'm going to keep shooting because I know I can make it. So sometimes before the practice, sometimes after the practice, but every day you have extra practices, shooting or other things maybe, maybe with conditioner coach, acceleration yeah. practice or whatever. But every yeah. day you need, even you are not overtired, for example, it's rarely, but in routine, normally you have this extra, right? Absolutely. And even if there's, you know, even if there's days where you're like, you know what, I'm really tired to shoot free throws, just mm -hmm. something, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is, or, mm -hmm. you know, just shoot for, and again, you, you don't have to do it for a long time. Like, like coach, you know, I'm not one of those guys where like, Oh, I was in the gym, you know, an hour after practice doing this or an hour before. No, I come in every day. I do my work that I feel that I need to do, whether it's, you know, getting a hundred shots up, 50 shots up and, You know, I'm consistent with that routine because that routine gives me confidence. You you can say that the tiring or going down is uh, starting from here. You can say it's not just depends on physically. Of course, it's physically, but I think it starts from here because in Turkey, both professional and youngs, I see that the main problem is everybody living this up and down situation, except Ser Serbian culture in Europe, honestly. And you guys coming from United States of college culture, as I told before, you have this culture about that every day you push yourself hard. But in Turkey, many players, even professional amateur, is least this up and down situation, confusing, concentration, focusing problem, whatever. So what you can give advice to our youngs about this part to supply every day this focusing to their job, to basketball. Yeah. I I think, honestly, to, to kind of get to your first part of the question, you know, it goes back to what I talked about, whether you have a good game or a bad game. I think it's easy for people to say, like, okay, I played well last game. All right, I'm, I'm in a good rhythm. I'm, I'm in good shape. I don't need to do the extra. Or maybe you have a bad game, and then they feel like, all right, I need to work extra hard because I had a bad game. Like, no, you know, it, you're – You're going to have bad games. You're going to have good games. It's part of basketball. 
So I think just whatever your routine is or whatever you feel comfortable where you're at, like I found my routine at a young age, you know, some days I like to come in, in the, before practice, some days after practice, but I stick to my routine because like I said, that gives me confidence in games because I know like I've put the work in. The games are the easy part. The practices, the training, that's the hard part. The games are the easy part. That's the fun. That's the really fun part going out playing, you know, and I know I've put work in to do that. So I think just, you know, not, not killing yourself to the point where like, cause yeah, you can, your body can get tired and it's natural. If you practice, you know, five days in a row, hard practices and you're doing stuff before and after, you know, there are days where you need to maybe tone it back a little bit. And like I said, maybe just shoot free throws. I'm still getting great form shooting and just shooting free throws. So I think finding that balance and being consistent, you got to be consistent with what you're doing. Please, please uh, uh, read this question from Tuna. Uh, you see the question, should we get a good academic education by being a good basketball? <laughs> This is the most important question of the day. Is, absolutely. Absolutely. Your education will take you way farther in life than your basketball career because eventually you're going to get old and you're not going to be able to play basketball for forever. There's only so many LeBron James who can play till they're 37, 38. <laughs> Most people can't play this long. So, you know, you have to have – when your basketball career is over, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And your academics are going to carry you way farther in life than any any sport, not just basketball, soccer, you know, whatever. It's not easy, but it's possible to keep continuing both of them at the same time, education and playing basketball. So – Uh, you guys is uh, you are you are doing this in in usual the system is this in turkey yeah. some part it's like a if you want to be a basketball player for example you you should sell, select one of them it's like this but some people some player uh, proved this it's not just what way is the uh, you, you should select one of them you can do it both at the same time if you have of course it's not easy but it's possible you think so For oh, our it's system. not easy. Okay. It's, it's for sure possible. I mean, like you said, in America, we're doing this, you know, from middle school, high school to the collegiate level. Um, I mean, because if honestly, in college, if you don't do well in school, you're not even going to be able to play basketball because you have to do well in school to play basketball. So they go hand in hand. And I think, um, you know, it is it's not easy. It's it's hard. And I think it's, uh, you know, you have to really get your priorities straight and know that, you know, I, I was taught at a young age, coach, where my dad always said, if you slack off in school, you're going to slack off on the court. He's like, if you're going to be lazy in school, you're going to be lazy on the court. They go hand in hand. So that's And here's a question. Why, why, you choose, why you choose basketball? Because you see that you, you, you can do this, huh? right? This question. Honestly, for why I chose basketball, I just I kind of grew up around it. You know, my my older brothers and and uh, my father, my mother even played basketball. It's where I get my height from. So, um, you know, it it just it was in my family. And and as as the youngest uh, sibling in my family, you know, watching your older brothers, you admire them. And I was like, man, I want to do what they're doing. So I just kind of grew up and I, I fell in love playing basketball. Fell in love with the game at a young age and just have enjoyed playing it. Okay, now uh, if you want, uh, let's go continue about to start from the questions we have before the broadcast. And uh, now, same time, F.A. Uh, I have your question. Uh, you see that first? Last 15 minutes, and you see this question. What did you take example play in NBA? First question was the same time he asked. Who do I like? Who do I watch most in the NBA? Is that is that kind of what you're asking? Like your idol or your example or whatever. Yeah. Um, oh gosh. Reggie Miller or? <laughs> <laughs> you know I. Because shooter. I'll say right now, right now in the NBA, um, I love watching Clay Thompson. No. Like no. When when you were young. When I was, was little. You? I was. Yeah. Michael Jordan, I remember him vaguely, like not because I was really young. Um, and even like Mark Price uh, played for the Cavs. Um, being from Ohio, he played in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> I had a Sean Kemp jersey. I don't know why I liked Sean Kemp. But probably, I mean, as a kid, you know, you just you hear so much and you watch so many highlights about Michael Jordan and how he worked and how competitive he was. But 
as I got a little older and also LeBron being from Ohio, you know, watching his career. And I remember watching LeBron in high school when I was a young kid, I would go watch him down in the, in the tournament in high school. And I was just amazed at how good he was. Um, but yeah, probably those guys. How about these days? What you can say I love about NBA? I love watching Thompson. I love watching Clay, Clay Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, his shooter. footwork, his footwork is crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a shooter. Um, I just I watch maybe from a different from a different like perspective, not just about like oh my gosh, he's an amazing shooter. I watch like his shot preparation is crazy. Like how he, he gets his feet ready to shoot is to me. I think he has the best footwork in the NBA. And as a shooter, I always try and like learn things and and I think how how his footwork is in games is incredible and that's how he's helps make him an amazing shooter kind of like what we talked about earlier footwork is so important when it comes to shooting somebody asked now I see and at the same time I prepared to ask the question before the broadcast is uh, one of our Izmir club Karatash club uh, say hello and let me read the whole sentences Uh, first of all, uh, we would like to thank our esteemed competitor, Agassi Sports Club, for this broadcast. What suggestions would you have for inf- infrastructure at that's in the COVID-19 process in this time and uh, same time uh, they had the question? Let me translate first. Uh, şimdi sorulara geçtik. Önce aldığım soruları okuyorum. Efe'nin sorusunu okudum. Şimdi Karatay Spok Gribi'nin sorusunu okudum. Evet. Bundan sonra da 2-3 tane daha yazılı sorun var. Sonra e, sorularınızı siz de sorun dedikten sonra 2-3 soru daha alıp zaten 10 dakika içerisinde bitirmemiz lazım. Son 10 dakikaya gireceğiz. Ama önce şu 2-3 soruyu sorayım. E, bu Karataş Kulübü'nün sorusunu sordum. Bu Covid döneminde şu anda güncel bir soru sordular. E, biraz önce bir arkadaşımız sordu. Ne tavsiye ediyorsun? Ne yapılabilir evde? What they can do in this period? Why? Because of the, they are not going to the courts. Jim. Yeah. Honestly... Um... If you have a basketball, just work on your ball handling, whether it's, you know, on the sidewalk, you know, little things like that, um, you know, whether it's working on your strength and doing push-ups at night or, you know, whatever it is you feel you need to work on, there's always something you can do. Even I was, coach, I was doing this last year when I was home during COVID. I was in my basement doing ball handling just because it was cold outside. Still you have. Couldn't, couldn't get in the gym, so I would go in the basement and do ball handling just to get that feel like, you know, like, okay, like I'm getting used to the ball again. And, and even just, if I don't have a basketball hoop, just shooting the ball in the air, working on my form or, you know, working on my footwork by having a basketball, taking one dribble and making sure my getting into my shooting stance with one hard dribble, getting into my shoe stance, little things like that. I was doing that in my basement back home. <laughs> so just little things like that. Okay. Another question from their little details, but they'll help you. Another question from Nejat Güngör. Uh, is it how, how much different uh, for playing about, the, of course, the regular time in, in front of the fans? Uh, how you can say about that the differences between playing home court game or away games for, for players about the pressure? Uh, I love, I, I enjoy playing on the road. I think... Uh, really? <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. The best one match and I'm going to play. I think it's a cool feeling when you have tons of fans yelling at you, screaming at you, then you hit a big shot, a big three, and you hear everyone go, ah, or they go quiet. I don't know. I think that's cool. Önemli so, bir üçlük attığındaki o tepkiler <laughs> beni motive ediyor. I, I, <laughs> I enjoy that. Um, but, man, there's – but playing, you know, I've I've been fortunate enough to play for some uh, – a lot of teams that have very good fans. You know, obviously, Karşiyaka fans, great. Galatasaray has a big following. Besiktas, and even, you know, Epis now – as they're continuing to improve and they have a very good team now. They have some fans. Um, and here in, in uh, Hapoel, Tel Aviv, you know, we have some very, very passionate fans. And same with Pan Yonios, man. We had some some big fans. And, you know, Dar Shafaka, our yearly games would get pretty loud. Um, but, again, for me personally, playing on the road and when you have, like, a bunch of people yelling at you and you hit, like, a big shot or something and they just – you hear it in the crowd – Oh, it makes you motivated. So it it makes Man, you motivated. It does. It, does. it yeah. motivates you. It yes. motivates you. And it's and a challenge. Doruk, it's it's hard to win on the road. So I kind of like I like that challenge. All five Doruk second time is asking, what was your purpose when you started uh, to play basketball? What was your target? What was your purpose? 
I mean, uh, growing up in America, everyone's dream is to play in the NBA. Um, or, you know, if you want to be a football player to play in the NFL or baseball, play in MLB. Um, you know, for me, I, I definitely wanted to play in the NBA and to be able to get drafted was, you know, even if it was in the second round, was a pretty cool accomplishment for me. Um, but man, I'm, I'm just so thankful for, you know, the being able to have the career that I've had overseas. Um, honestly, mainly just because the places that I've got to see and the people that I've gotten to meet, it's not even about just taking basketball out of it. It's just been so awesome to travel the world and, and meet, you know, meet you and some of the guys. I mean, you know, coach, I talk to a lot of my former teammates all the time. So, um, but no, it's the, my dream was definitely to play the NBA and I never achieved that, that goal of mine, but I'm, I wouldn't trade my career for anything. I've, I've loved, uh, I've loved, you know, meeting, meeting new people, friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life and seeing new places. It's, it's awesome. If you come again, to Turkey, one more time, you get offered five different clubs, which one of them you prefer? <laughs> oh gosh. Of my old teams. Is that what you're asking? Yes, which, yes, yes. Or, or, or, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes. Oh five gosh. teams. You can't put me on the spot like that. Every it's it's so it's so crazy because, um, you know, everyone. I get a lot of questions, especially when I was in Turkey. Like, what do you like better, Izmir or Istanbul? Izmir or Istanbul? And I'm like, man, come on. Like, they're so different. Um, and I, I've, man. I mean, probably probably one of my my favorite years would have been in Karşek I think the year we won the championship um not even just about because we won the championship but coach you know we had a special group man we had a really special group um from a chemistry standpoint uh so I don't know it's it's tough though it's tough that's a tough question <laughs> <laughs> you cannot choose huh by the way now you are that's almost hard, 33 man. How many years uh, you, you think about 32, yourself? Man, for, I'm not almost 33. Not come almost on, Jan 30, January 20. I, I know almost in a month you are no, 33. No, I know that. January. June 22nd. I know. No, it's June. June. Oh. It's June. Okay, come on. 30. Complete me. What is the name, man? What is the Okay. <laughs> so your, your jersey number 33 is coming. Your jersey number is coming. Evet. And evet. Uh, in, in, in two, three, two, evet. Evet. <laughs> in in two minutes we need to uh, finish this and thank you for also from now on about this conversation. How many years more do you think about to continue? Oh gosh, I would love to um, play another two or three years. Honestly, um, you know, obviously barring any injury, severe injury, you know, I do. I feel good. I've battled some injuries here early on this season, but I'm finally healthy and I feel good finally after about four or five weeks. Um, so I hope, I hope to, uh, you know, in my mind, I would like to play another two or three years. That's the plan. But obviously, you know, having a family now and depending on where it is and everything, those are all things that I'll definitely reevaluate at the end of the year, but I feel good. I really do coach, yeah. you know, after last year, having that year off, we, you know, we had our, our kids and I feel refreshed. Our president, uh, UCK, takes on uh, right over there. You guys are very good, like before. <laughs> he takes it. He thanks also. And, no, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, for us, for all, all of our uh, club, for our players, for our president, coaches, for, for everybody I represent. And that was very good for us, John. Uh, thank you uh, to support like this. Uh, and maybe one day when you join to Izmir for holiday or whatever. You can come to our practices, to gym, and uh, maybe uh, show Would something about, yeah, show some some details about the shooting or hard working or mentality. I think mostly because your mentality yeah. was very is very very uh, respectful for me. Uh, the same consistency as I uh, said before to work hard, discipline, and that's why I want to start with you for this conversation. Thank you a lot, and uh, you have new kids. One boy, one girl, almost one year. That's right. Please kiss, kiss yes. them for us. Please kiss them for us. Say hello to Ketri. Thank you. Thank Let you us instruct her. Thanks for having me, Coach, Everyone? man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, see you.
Bye bye. We will follow you at Hapoel Tel Aviv. İyi akşamlar. See you. Evet, see you. Bye bye.